Molly, start since you're off. the one dancing, start us off. Welcome everyone. I don't know why I'm using that voice. Um, <laughs> it's your sexy voice. <laughs> this whole episode, we'll use Molly's sexy voice. No, we won't. We will not do that. <laughs> not for this topic, but for no. another topic. <laughs> Welcome everybody to this episode of Semi Sages of the Pages. <laughs> this is Molly. This is Morgan. And I'm Teresa. Thank you everyone for joining us. We wanted to start off um, our first section as always is what's on our page, what's on my page. And you know what? It's 2023. It's a new year. Same me. But what am I excited for this year? And what are we excited for this year? Um, you know, community. just to kind of start. Oh, community. Morgan's, Morgan's all about that community. <laughs> Yeah, I want to build. I'm so excited. I can't even stand myself, right? I had to jump right in. I am super excited to build a supportive community because I feel like my writing has really grown last year and it's time for me to really get serious about querying my books. And I'm going to need a positive community to help me handle those rejections and have the courage to keep querying. <laughs> nice. And you're going to need your, your beta readers, your arc readers, mm -hmm. all of those people, they're your critique partners to help you get there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm very excited. Uh, one thing I can't, I, these ladies know, I can't really tell you guys out there yet. I am helping with a pretty major conference, uh, writer's conference this year. And I'm excited to network and build that com and build community there, meet more people, integrate more, but also I'm really excited. Um, we're much more present on YouTube right now, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm excited to build this community and get to see you guys through the screen, sort well, of. Hopefully um, we can't actually see them. They're not <laughs> they working <laughs> outside. That would be weird. They but can see us though. Please don't come to our homes. We could see I'm them at AWP in March in Seattle because all three of us will be there and we're going to have an absolutely amazing time. March building March. community. Building, building community. community, which is a big goal of ours this year. <laughs> what about you, Teresa? Well, oddly enough, I am super excited to build community as well. What? I know. It's, it's like we planned it. <laughs> <laughs> No, but super excited to go to the AWP conference, um, keep building our discord um, with Sarah over at No Bad, continue building our author family over there, um, continue um, launching other authors' careers. So yeah, super, super excited. Yeah. You do I mean, a ton for authors. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We try. Yeah. yeah and I know you do a lot of editing and launching careers and it's exciting. And she's talking about No Bad Books Press. You should check mm -hmm. it out. She does amazing work over there. And if Thank you're looking you. um, for, what would you, you call it? You take queries right now. You're we take queries. Yeah. yeah, we take yeah. queries um, at www.nobadbookspress.com. We primarily look for spec, spec fiction. So fantasy, horror, sci-fi, somewhere in there. Um, but we're, we're pretty broad. We're just looking for good writing, good will good world building, good characters. Yeah. Which I'm sure our audience has a lot of those. So make sure you yeah. let Teresa into your life. Yeah. Check it out. Check out. <laughs> so we did plan this. We did plan this episode around community. Um, but, but Molly was the one that really launched it as we were talking about what we wanted to talk about. Um, Molly had said, I'm super excited to build to build our community in 2023. So what we wanted to do in this episode was talk about the dark side of community, uh, talk about what happens when there's bullying, talk about what happens when a community rallies um, against a person or against a group of people, um, and talk about what you can do to either get out of that situation or avoid it from even happening. So we're gonna start off um, our industry talking about bullying in communities, um, because unfortunately in the author community, there is this feeling of there's only so many books out there and every author is my competition rather than this idea of if we publish good books, there will be more readers that will want to read more of our books, which I think is you know, to speak to our Discord community, I think we have a really positive community on Discord and we have really healthy communities. So if you're out there looking for a healthy community, 
I can tell you that ours is a very safe, healthy community um, that we've built. And so we've talked about that a lot. Please see our, our former podcast. We talk about critique partners, how to support each other, how to give good advice, how to take advice when sometimes it hurts. But one of the reasons we wanted to talk about this was um, today we woke, I woke up to a bunch of texts from the, from the ladies <laughs> from us, saying, yeah. like I woke up to, oh my gosh, can you believe what happened? So Molly, what happened? Yeah. So here's how pervert or um, expansive Pervasive. this, this I was. Say perverted. <laughs> yeah. I, I have trouble with language sometimes, um, <laughs> but uh but it, it was so pervasive in this space and a lot of articles have been written. Uh, I think Teresa, you said the New Yorker, the Rolling Stone wrote an article about this. I found out because my husband texted me about it and about some of the Twitter threads that were happening, but, um, essentially an author, an indie author faked her own death. By, oh, suicide. by suicide, by suicide. And specifically her family said that she committed suicide because she was bullied in author communities, kind of to sell books, just mind boggling. Like you hear of crazy things happening. You hear of, you know, books getting canceled by people before they're even written. You, you hear some of this stuff, but like, man, faking your own death and then blaming others for it. And then using it, to, oh man, there's so many layers to this. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So this was, um, this one was a tricky, a tricky one. And then there is, and, and the story is still developing. Um, I mean, we are recording today. It's January 4th. Um, so by the time you hear this, you know, the, the story we might know more, we, we might know more. So bear with us. This is the information that we have. Here's though, that she went back onto social media and posed as her daughter and, or set up other names and set profiles. up other accounts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to continue this idea of basically buy, buy these books. There was uh, an auction that was set up that other authors donated money to, uh, to, for funeral costs or they donate, excuse me, they donated, um, books too. And then Wait. those books were auctioned off for funeral I mean, costs. Yeah. I missed um, that. I, her, this woman's well, final book received a uh, free editing. So people, you know, you know, oh my gosh, you know, we need to publish this woman's final book. It, you know, was her dream. It was her gift to her daughter's wedding day. Yeah. That's yeah. That's the, um, you know, we, we need editors and, you know, it needs help to get published. So people donated their own time to, to edit Everyone it, buy this book and support it. And mm -hmm. there were anthologies. It was a bull bullying anthology that was devoted to this woman's memory, um, you know, uh, basically to help uh, bring to light the bullying in the author community to, you know, to ha have, have the conversations that we're having around, we don't want to bully people in the author community. So that part was good. The, the bad part was that she wasn't, and, and perhaps she was bullied. I don't know. Maybe she was bullied, but she wasn't bullied to the point of committing suicide. Which I think what none of us are saying that anyone should, that, that should ever happen. No, 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 <laughs> we, just, no. we just want to be very clear. Um, and, and there's a, you'll, you'll notice there's a reason we're not giving a ton of details. And it is because, um, you know, Teresa brought up a, a great per point earlier. Um, we don't really want to say this person's name. Uh, we don't really want to talk about what her books are called, um, because we don't want to give her more traction or more traffic or more attention, um, uh, because someone like this, wants attention. Mm -hmm. And while we think it's important to talk about the issue of bullying and what happens when communities go dark, we also don't want to direct more traffic and more attention to her. And so this is kind of hopefully going to, to that that's our middle ground. That's hopefully what we're trying to do here. So I think what we really want to talk about is the fact that even after her alleged suicide, the thing that really stuck out to me that I was kind of more focused on was that people were bullying the people who she who allegedly bullied. bullied her. Yeah. 
and they had some really rough things happen to them. And so it became this cycle of bullying, right? So Mm -hmm. because one person's mean to another, then that justifies them being mean. And it just creates this really toxic cycle um, that we're calling on this podcast of when communities go dark, they, when they choose instead of, you know, just the simple principle two wrongs don't make a right, right. Seems to have been forgotten. And people think, well, if they did this, then it justifies me doing that. And so I think people start to lose themselves in the race for, I don't know if it's fame or notoriety, or I don't know what exactly causes that, but it definitely hurts feelings. And I feel like we're already so vulnerable as writers with our work and our stories. And we're putting ourselves out there that I feel like we're an especially vulnerable community. And we take that to heart in a way that maybe some communities don't. And so I think it's important for us as writers to acknowledge that and then maybe embrace it. Yeah. I think some of the aspects you're like, why does this happen? A lot of the communities we're talking about are virtual communities. Yes. A lot of the people in the virtual communities are operating under fake names, pseudonyms. Sometimes people feel like they can say whatever they want to say when it's virtual, when they don't have to look at the person, look at the person, stuff like that. And that can, that can be harmful, you know, when they don't have a filter through, through the internet. And then I think there's also like sometimes that group mentality, that piling on can happen. You for, well, you forget that the person on the other side is a person. You forget that they're a real human being with real feelings and emotions. And, you know, they're not perfect, but they're doing their best. And you just yell into the abyss, right? You post another comment, you, you know, poke another hole at at something or someone or whatever. And you forget that that, that there's a person back there. And then it's really can be really easy to just pile on another Mm -hmm. comment, another thing, another, you know, flaw in whatever you found. Um, so I think that's part of, that's not the whole thing. And right their communities don't always just exist virtually. The communities don't always exist just virtually. Um, but I think that is one aspect well, that can happen. I think there's an element and, and we're actually touching on what's going on in society. There's an element of righteousness. Mm. I am right. Mm. You are wrong. Mm-hmm. And I and think you should sometimes- pay for that. Sometimes I think though it start. It, yes, absolutely. There's an element of that, but I think a lot of times it starts as wanting to have a conversation or wanting to state an opinion or possibly a fact. Um, and that other people not knowing how to have a discourse or a debate about it. And then emotions get involved. And then all of a sudden we have two people on both sides that are not listening to each other. And then one side gets their friends involved that believe the same thing they believe. The other side gets their friends involved that believe the things that they believe. And all of a sudden you've got massive bullying going on. And then it gets personal. It gets personal. Yeah. There have been authors who have been bullied to the point that they've been reported to Amazon Um, and had their Amazon account shut down and been unable to retrieve them. Your Amazon account gets shut down. You're done on Amazon. You cannot open up a new Amazon account and they pull your books. And if you are exclusive on Amazon, your books are gone. They're gone. Is that mostly indie authors too that are targeted? Mm -hmm. So this, this is uh, maybe a higher risk for indie authors. Not, not just indie authors. I'm thinking, do you guys know this Lindsay Ellis? I think you've, um, it's a big, long story. Um, but she had a YouTube channel was decently prolific in her YouTube channel and books and stuff like that. Um, she got bullied off the platform after saying something that, uh, certain people didn't agree with certain people, uh, took offense to, took offense to, took mm-hmm. offense to, and bullied her until she had to shut down all of her social media and abandon her YouTube channel and just leave. And she got death threats. She got all sorts of things. And it was, Mm -hmm. um, I think her YouTube channel is still up and she talks about like things that happened and how it happened and how she was bullied, how it escalated, uh, goes through like the timeline of how it happened and then like what got drug up and how, and she even gives examples of other people who were bullied as well and how it happened for them. 
Um, so that, that is very interesting. That's something you're interested in. And I think that was her last video before she, she had to just leave and shut, shut it all down. But we've seen other celebrities leave social media as well for that. Um, a lot of the, um, the female Mm -hmm. star Wars actresses Mm -hmm. have had Mm -hmm. to leave, Mm -hmm. um, social media because they had, they are so bullied. I mean, the poor gentleman who played Jar Jar Binks almost committed suicide because of, of the way that the media attacked the media and the fans just attacked that character. And he wasn't even that character. I mean, he was an actor. Or more recently, um, what the actress who played Rose in the new, in the latest Star Wars. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, got bullied off of a lot of things and received death threats and all for doing nothing for playing a role in a film that people didn't like. Yeah. People didn't like the character. I actually, I loved her character, um, but people didn't like it and they rallied against her. I think it's, well, I, as I'm listening to this, I'm like, it makes you okay. So first of all, I would say we used you a lot when we were talking and I don't think any of our listeners are the kind of, I mean, nobody in our discard for sure are the kind oh, of yeah, people absolutely. who like reach out and attack. So that's I want to be really yeah, clear yeah, about that's that. Fair. Like, yeah. I don't think that our audience or the people listening are those kind of people. No, um, no. agreed. And, and I do think yeah. some of that is bots. And I think we need there to be and trolls. And trolls. 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 And, and there are bad people out there, I'm sorry, but who get off on hurting other people. Mm-hmm. And I think my instinct is, as I listen to this to be like, oh, I just can't put anything out there. That's why I don't query so much. That's why, because I'm, I'm nervous about that. I, I don't want that in my life. You know, I don't want that negativity. And I know that the people on our discord are the same way, right? Like they want to have a nice, happy, successful life. They don't want to have to deal with other people's you know, dumping their negativity. But also I think there is an element of tough it out in the sense that you can't let the trolls win either. Mm -hmm. Like if you, if we don't put ourselves out there, if we give attention to the trolls, if we give attention to the bullies and not give attention to the positive communities and all the good, for example, I don't want to say the name of the woman who faked her death, but I would like to say the woman of the the name of the woman who helped edit her book, the people who helped donate their books, you know, out of this good cause, because those people I think are the majority of the writing community. And so I think the majority of the writing community really are amazing, selfless. Like I have the best beta readers and friends I've met in the virtual community Mm -hmm. from writing. I met you too at a conference, you know, my best friends. Now I met at, at writers conferences and online. And I can't imagine my life without so yeah. many of the people in it. And so I think, I think it's something, it's just like real life in the sense that you have to get a, when a person shows you who they are, when they excuse my language here, but shit talk somebody else, then know they'll do that to you when mm-hmm. they're, when they tactfully can't take someone else's criticism. Remember, they probably can't take yours and seek out people who don't do that form community. I mean, that's why we're excited about communities is because I think the community offers us an opportunity to focus on the positive. And if you stay in that positive mindset, for the most part, I think a lot of the negative people go away. I think that too. I, I think there is a definitely an element of when you participate in the bullying, even if you even, well, and, 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 um, Morgan just caught me in this. Um, I, I had two things there and it was the, the you, um, and I agree when it's the general one, you, when, yeah, general when you, one. Yeah. but, but I will work on this when one participates in the bullying or even doesn't even participate in the, um, you know, you suck type thing, but participates in the, the shit talking. Oh my gosh, I can't believe what that person did. Did you see what that person over there did? No, did you see what that person over there did? You when you when one participates in that, you are also participating in an element of bullying too. Dang it, I did it again with the you. One well, is think, participating. Yeah, I think that's a tricky thing. You know, it's good for us. All the writers out there are like, we know POV is hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One more thing I wanted to really nail home to our listeners out there that Morgan touched on, but really, really to emphasize 
we genuinely believe the majority of people out there are good. Yeah. Like putting yourself out there is, has been good for, for the three of us. Mm-hmm. We've, we've met good people in good communities and there are occasionally bad apples out there, but the vast majority of people are good and you shouldn't be scared to interact with authors. You know, if you're sitting there, I don't want you to listen to our episode and be like, oh my gosh, they say that bullying is common and therefore I should not like engage. That's not the takeaway. That's not the takeaway I want you to have. Um, We want to give you insight and tools into, you know, what can happen and maybe what to do if you find yourself or maybe what red flags are or how to adapt and how to find good communities um, and key and, and that, but in the, in the vast majority of people are helpful and nice and positive. And that's true in industry as well. Mm -hmm. So to wrap up industry, I've worked with so many amazing agents and got to know them. And it's, it's just true. When you put out good things, for the most part, good things come back to you. And if not, if you just keep believing in the positivity of people, the negative people will get tired of your optimism. (laughs) I mean, that's one thing that I've learned over my life is you will attract, if you're talking about craft and you want to talk about learning how to make your characters better, the people who just want to shit talk somebody else will go find somebody to shit talk somebody else. And the people who want to learn about craft are going to stay around and learn about craft with you. And so I think it's true when you're looking for like no bad books press to work with Teresa, who's positive all the time and amazing. You're vetting those people. And it's really Mm -hmm. important that you look at what they do and to make sure that they have a positive online. I've passed on a couple agents actually. Um, that's one of the reasons I don't have an agent because of the stuff that they put online. And I was like, I, I can't have that like in my life, you know? So I didn't Mm -hmm. even, I had like full requests. I didn't even send because it just didn't feel good to me. And I don't want to be associated with someone who's, who's not going to have the same values I have. And Mm. if they would say that about somebody else, I really believe that they would end up saying that about me. And so for industry, I think For those of you who are going to be traditionally published, I think it's really, really important that you vet the type of publisher you're going with, your editor, your agent, not just for their ability to sell books, but for their character to make sure it's in line with who you really want to be because it's such an important business. Like, And you have to work with them. You want Mm -hmm. to work with people you enjoy being with. You enjoy having a conversation with and trust with your work. And as easy as it is, and we are all guilty of this, it is easy to bond around shit talking. It is, you know, how do you make friends with somebody? Shit talk somebody else. It's easy to do that, but it doesn't last. And at some point you Mm -hmm. will look and be like, the only thing I have in common with this person is just bad talking other people. And at some points you're going to realize that's not healthy or it's going to come back to bite you. I think, you know, we talked about industry a lot, but we also wanted to talk about, you know, when you have individual interactions with people, you know, turning into the craft space, right. Turning the page, how do we deal with maybe not bullying, but you know, we're, we're with a person in our community and we don't feel like we're getting constructive, helpful feedback. And we think that the feedback has maybe turned overly harsh, overly critical, maybe personal, um, something like that. And and what do we do? How do we deal with that? Yeah. Or sometimes can I just throw this out? Mm -hmm. There's so much helpful feedback. It beats us down. Mm -hmm. Piling on piling. I've definitely seen it when you're in a, in a writer group, right. And it can be in a document or it can be like in person and one person says something and then another person jumps on and then another person jumps on and you spend five minutes talking about a comma and elements of forming community and bonding with other people over a comma, because, well, it's better to, you know, look at this. We're all on the same page and we're friends now because we all hate this comma. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> we do all hate this comma <laughs> i was like farting comma <laughs> yes we all hate this fire trucking comma um, so in it's human instinct to find things that you relate to um it's human instinct to be like you breathe there i breathe there oh my god we're gonna be best what? friends 
you hate this fire truck and comma. I hate this fire truck and comma. We're best friends for life. And, and then the third really person, wait, the wait, tell me. Yeah. <laughs> and then the third person jumps in. Wait, I hate the fire truck and comma too. But also this other thought about the comma. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then all of a the sudden, these three people are BFFs. And that one author's like, okay. Can we not talk about the comma? I get it. Yeah. yeah I won't we'll ever use commas again. Yeah. Two things that can happen from the author who's getting piled on first, you can be like, okay, I got it. I I would have fixed it after the first comma. Now we've wasted four minutes. Can we talk about anything in the developmental edit? Right? Like I asked you to talk about character arcs, <laughs> like which happens or oh, the character arcs were good. Let's go back to the comma. Right. Or <laughs> but they don't mention that. They forget to mention, oh, the character arcs were fine. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. great. It was great. Yeah. So I think sometimes and, and I think a lot of times in that situation, the people who are talking about the comma really want to make your writing better. They're yes. not actually, they're not mean. You. It yeah. can feel hurtful, but they're actually like what I think one of the times that happens the most in critique and look for this for yourself as an author, all of a sudden they'll start really talking about an issue that makes you feel crappy. And they'll just keep talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. And they'll come up with solutions and you don't like their solutions and you don't know why. And you, they'll just keep talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. And then all of a sudden, you'll realize the problem is, and and we, I can't remember which authors taught us this, but it's way earlier in the manuscript, or it's just one paragraph earlier in the manuscript. And they just, the reason they're talking about it so much is that subconsciously, they don't know what they're trying to tell you, but they know it's important. And so try to hear it as an author, try to hear, they're trying to help you. They're not trying to shit talk on you. They're talking around it because they themselves don't really know why it's bothering them. Uh, Neil Gaiman talks about that. Oh, thank um, you. That a lot of times where people have said there's a problem here, it's not there, it's earlier. And that problem that they pinpointed is a symptom of an earlier problem. I think oh, other I think, than the fire trucking comma. I, mm-hmm. I think that's one of the big things I learned this year. I did a lot of edits this year. And that's one of the big things is the problem is rarely where people think the problem is. It's usually earlier. Mm-hmm. Or what it is. So they'll, mm-hmm. they'll nitpick the comma, nitpick the comma. What they really need to do is flip the sentence structure. Mm-hmm. Yep. Really the dependent clause should be the independent clause and the independent clause should be the dependent clause. And so it's not the comma that's bothering them. It's where they've got their subject predicate and, and what that's doing, how flipping that is affecting the, the flow of the paragraph. But I want to get back to a point you were talking about, which I think is really important when people are doing this and you feel run down and you're like, oh my gosh, I get it. And I feel like you, you feel kind of bullied sometimes Mm -hmm, you do you, and you're like, man, they're all piling in. And they're just like, I thought this was a good section, but I'm just getting a bunch of crap, not crap, but like, you feel like crap. And Oftentimes it's important, at least for me, it's important to remember, like sometimes that's because the the piece is good Mm -hmm. and they don't have anything else to talk about Mm -hmm. and they don't have anything big to talk about. Um, that, that can be like why someone, you know, why they hone in on a coma for comma for five minutes, because there's nothing else to talk about. Okay. So two things on that. I think sometimes people who themselves are not feeling very confident will pile on. Mm -hmm. because they're like, so I think sometimes as well, taking a deep breath and being like, okay, that is a brand new author. And yep. They notice the same, they notice the same problem and they're just happy that they can contribute. They can, Mm -hmm. exactly. They're just trying to contribute. They're trying to have a voice. So taking a deep breath and acknowledging that they're not a bad, they're not a mean person. They're just trying to contribute trying to participate, trying to participate in the community. Mm -hmm. But the other piece of it is that you do need a moderator or somebody who is going to kind of be a leader in that situation to be like, get, okay, guys, we're done talking about the comma. Let's move it along. Yeah. I think one thing that we've done that's helpful is a timer. Mm -hmm. Like there's, there's things, there are ways to do this and different things work better in different groups when you're in critique groups, like there's different strategies. We've talked about some of this before. Um, so I don't want to rehash it too much, but for me, like the main feedback, if you're in that moment, right. The main feedback for me is like, try to keep like Morgan said, and, and Teresa as well. Remember that these people are trying to help you. 
Like assume positive intent, assume that they're trying to help you assume they're trying to be positive and maybe they've gotten fixated. They've gotten down into a rabbit hole or they're a new author and they're just trying to contribute, but they're, they're not, don't know how to focus their critique or whatever it might be. That's, you know, it can be frustrating, but they're trying to help you. And that, that can be very helpful for me to like breathe in and be like, okay, And then two, can I add two more to that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. The first one is the most helpful thing that I needed because I was, I'm a pleaser. I'm a really bad pleaser. And so I'll try to change the comma for whoever. Finally, it wasn't until this year that I'm like this, you have to have a beta reader who knows your style intimately. That doesn't happen overnight. Like I didn't understand how long it takes Mm-hmm. To build the connection between your, your, I call them my alpha readers. I have two of them. And to really be able to say, I need help with this choice and then have someone who really has your back. And when you look at the bestselling authors, they all have that. And usually it's another bestselling author that's went through the, the trenches with them. Y- yes. But you also need that with your editor as well. Oh, and your yeah. editor should be... <clears throat> your editor should be having that conversation fairly early on on that and setting boundaries having conversation that's why like I know when I do developmental edits I do not send them the developmental edits until I have a conversation with them I sit down and I say smart here are the things so good here are the things that I have noticed Um, and this hasn't happened so far, but if I, if I was to feel like they were like shutting down, I would be like, I'm going to go ahead and retype up my notes (laughs) You're going to turn that down. And I, and I would, and I would tone it down a little bit. A developmental edit is about like, here, here's where I noticed some potential problems. What are your thoughts on this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, here's one thing I noticed. Did you do that intentionally? Oh, you did. Cool. Oh, yeah. you did it. Okay. Let's talk about why I noticed it then. Yeah. Um, have that conversation, set the boundaries with the person before you send them and send them notes that have thousands of like, I don't like this, maybe change this. Da, 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 da. Well, I don't do that in a developmental edit, but in a line by line, there might be hundreds of yeah. move this sentence over here, get rid of this comma. This line is wordy. No more that's get rid of the just, um, and that that's not bashing the work. Too um, many commas. No. It, I think Too many commas. <laughs> something that I forget sometimes. It can be really, really difficult. Um, when you have a new author or a person who is new to you, mm-hmm. I usually have a, a higher threshold in terms of like, okay, I need to watch what I'm saying. I need to make sure that I gauge the boundaries and I need to make sure I don't pile on and I need to make sure I do all these things. Right. And I'm, I'm mentally like very cognizant of a lot of stuff, especially if the writer is newer and you can tell in the piece, right. If the piece is rough, Like, you know, the piece is rough and you're reading the piece is rough and you could give 5 million comments. And then you have to sit there and you're like, I'm not going to give 5 million comments. I'm going to give two or three big picture stuff and we'll move on. But I think there's a danger when it's your friends, when it's someone established, when you've worked with them for a long time, you've been in critique group for a while, they come with such really good polished material and you've got 20 minutes to fill on a critique. And what are you going to say? Oh, it's good. Let's move on. No, you find nitpicks. Um, again, this is not you, you, but like the, the general royal you. Um, but I, I think there's the, we need to remember the royal we, um, that established authors still have emotions and feelings and, you know, we can't be hard on them all the time, even though we think they can take it. And even though we're super excited to see their writing improve and we want to be nitpicky because we want them to go from great to excellent and all that kind of stuff, but we still need to be cognizant of feelings and, you know, what is a mountain and what is a molehill? And sometimes it's good to say like, this is a molehill. This is, this is a nothing thing that we're talking about. So one thing Molly does really well that I love and critique is if we're looking at a chapter and the chapter is just really rough, 
then she'll, she will just like start saying, let's talk about some developmental and edits. Like I just had a chapter where she's like, I don't love the start. You, Mm -hmm. you know, there's some issues. And then she's like, but I really like from here down. So I was like, okay, I've got to do a full chapter rehaul chapter before that. She actually was a lot more nitpicky, but she kept saying, I like the chapter. The bones are good. The work is good. I I'm being nitpicky. I'm being nitpicky. So I can hear the Just difference when she's saying hair differently. Yeah. When she's saying I'm being nitpicky, I she'll sometimes it'll sound sometimes harsher because it does it that can. chapter because she thinks that chapter's better, but because she reminds me, I go, okay. And so I'll write that down in big letters and that helps me. So when you're giving advice, maybe that's something that you can do, or it's a question you can ask. You know, one question you could ask your beta readers, is: do you think the bones are working? Do you think the protagonist is active enough? Do you like this protagonist? Is the villain overdone? You know, come. How come big of an issue is this? Mm-hmm. Sorry. That's to- a good one. No, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So let's take it back to building community. Let's say you're sitting in the room. There isn't a, a natural leader or, you know, the natural leader has stepped away or isn't, you know, has zoned out because, you know, it's Friday night and they're exhausted. And it happens. Um, it happens. It, yeah. and it absolutely happens there. They have checked out for a couple of minutes and they're not paying attention to kind of what's going on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly what Molly's what, doing. What? Sorry. <laughs> what can you do if you're like, okay, enough with a comma. I think it's important to speak if you are comfortable and hopefully you are, hopefully you're building that healthy community to speak up and be like, guys, can we get off the fire truck and comma, please? Enough. I got you. What about this? Yeah. And saying it not, like, I always try to be like, oh, I've got it. Thank you so much. Can you move on? <laughs> I, or or you can even say, I'm, really muted. I'm like, got it. <laughs> Especially if there's somewhere else in your work that, that you want them to focus, you mm-hmm. know, you know, Hey, I really appreciate your guys' feedback on this. We've only got five more minutes left. I really wanted to hear about how you thought this character interaction on this page went. I was worried that the dialogue didn't work. What did you guys think about that? I, you know, I, I, I just want to make sure we have time for that. Is that okay? Okay. That kind so, of thing Like, you thank them and then redirect. Okay. So if you're in a critique yes. group, this is really important. If you're in a critique group and you keep getting feedback two weeks in a row, I would say. So twice you've gone to critique group and you've been frustrated by your critique that you're getting. And so you're starting to feel a little uneasy with the group because this is my big piece of advice to you. At the top of your critique, say, please critique for and give them no more than three things you want them to look at. And so just give them a little bit of a guidance and then evaluate how they do before you decide to abandon that group or before you make harsh decisions. Because a lot of times just giving that that guidepost puts you on the same page and then helps people focus and can really, really take what might have been frustrating you and actually create a really rich and meaningful experience that actually elevates whatever you're working on in a really substantial way. You can also be honest, you know, with, um, not that that's not being honest, uh, but you know, sometimes it is helpful to, to tell people like, Hey, I'm really vulnerable here. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I felt really Sweet vulnerable a- after these past two critiques and I felt really bruised and beat up about this. And I, I would really appreciate, you know, can we, can we change how we critique things? Can we do an even better if method? Can we start with general takeaways and then move into some of the stuff? Can we, um, you know, I, I, I like you guys, but I, I feel really bruised. Uh, can, can we think about how we're doing things here? And if they still don't adapt and they still don't say, oh yeah, no. Or if they respond like, no, this is how we do things. Then okay to find somebody else. It is okay to find another community or, or admit, like, maybe I'm getting enough out of this community and you just set up some boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been in communities where it just wasn't right Mm -hmm. and it was no knock against them. It just wasn't a good fit and that's okay. And there are so many communities out there, virtual and in person that I think it's important to note that you don't have to be with a community that is not good for you. Mm-hmm. so that's a good segue you have options you can you can be with people you really enjoy being with what might be some red flags for this community's not working for me because you want and here's the thing you want a community that aligns with your values and that you're getting something out of so what might be some red flags and these are going to be different for other people for everybody because some people 
want different things out of communities? For me, um, I think a community is failing you or you need to really re-examine it or come at it from a different way when you don't want to write anymore. Mm. When it's starting to affect the joy of writing. Uh, for me, I find a community, is, okay, so this is specifically with critique groups, but a big major red flag for me in critique groups is someone who wants critique, but never reads other people's stuff and never gives critique. Mm, that's a big one. Oh, so there's actually people out there who put their own work out, but don't return the favor. Oh, yeah. I had, there was one that I went to, um, in person and this guy, basically he would, uh, we would have critique days and he would submit his work for critique. And then when it got to critique time in the meeting, he would say, oh, I have a thing to go to. Can I go first? And he would go first and we would all give him feedback and then he would leave. Wow. Yeah. And I think that that goes into, I think many communities have a set of rules or norms or guidance, uh, especially when a, when a new person joins. So I had previously been to a writing group um, when I lived in a different state. And that was one of the things that they, when you had a new person come in, they said, Hey, welcome to our group. Welcome to our critique group. Uh, you know, we meet every Thursday at 7 PM. I'm glad you found us. We'll be here every Thursday. Here's how you submit. Uh, we take submissions, the first five submissions that are 10 pages or less each one. And if you, the, you know, we have a rule of, you know, put, put trigger warnings at the top, just in case. And we have a rule. If you put your stuff up for critique, you must critique other people's. And they had like a, like a handful of rules and they weren't kind of like written down, but, but they had a thing at the beginning where like, this is how we expect you, you operate. And I mean, in our discord, we have community guidelines. We have rules mm -hmm. that say, and they're not, they're not a ton. We have just no. a couple. It, it's, you know, a lot of golden rule. Be nice. Treat no other people appropriately. With us around. <laughs> yep. no, no, no bullying. We don't yep. want that. Yeah. But I think sometimes depending on the community, like, you know, it, it has, it has norms and expected behavior from its participants. Mm -hmm. And the community sets those up. I will tell you my red flag. And this wasn't, this isn't necessarily in a critique group. This would just be in a, a meeting, a community, you know, apple pickers united. And I apologize if there are apple pickers out there being like me, <laughs> um, <laughs> but to me, it would be, you go and you join, or you've got, you've gone to a couple meetings, you know, you're starting to get friendly, you know, and chat with people. And then all of a sudden people want you on their side. All of a sudden you're getting pulled away. Yeah. They're talking about group. the other side and I don't, yeah, I can't believe though. Kyle did blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Did you, did you see what so-and-so said over there? What were your thoughts on that? Yeah. So my thoughts were bad. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, let's go out to coffee. Let's talk about this more. And then you got to coffee and you're like, we just talk shit about that one person. That was kind of shitty, but it happens because all of a sudden you have been selected. You are a part of the exclusive group. You're they're, in. They're, you're in. There's psychology behind this. You not only now you've got friends and you know what those friends do? They talk about Bob, sorry, I sorry for Bob's out there. They talk about Bob. And if all of a sudden, you know, you're the, the meeting is done or there's a break, you got somebody you can go and talk to. Talk about Bob. Mm -hmm. Talk about how shitty Bob is. Which keeps you're not sitting you there from talking about your book and your characters and how to be competitive with craft and how to get good hooks and how to do transition and all the things you really need to know and what kind of you know, how, what kind of dialogue tags do you need? And how is the industry changing with word length? And if you, all that time you're wasted on Bob is not, is not your craft, your development is not moving mm -hmm. you towards your personal goals. And so it's just a vice. And I think that that's such an important thing that, like you said, Teresa, to see that as a true waste of time, because to add to a community that I would leave, if I feel a community is wasting my time, I'm out. Yeah, no, I don't have enough time to waste talking about Bob. 
I yeah. agree. I want to talk about craft. I want to talk about industry. I want to, I want, I want to be a better person and I want to build a healthy community that doesn't talk about Bob. Mm-hmm. And again, apologize for all the Bobs out there. I just well, want to unless Bob is the character of your story. And then we want to hear all about it. <laughs> exactly. Here, here's the one place, like, here's the distinction we should make, right? If Bob is asking for help, we give Bob help. Yes. Yes. Right. Like, like, yes. <laughs> It's that's not the same as talking. It's not the same thing. Bob's back. Exactly. That's talking to Bob honestly and saying everything you would say to Bob. Like exactly. I'm just. I'm just making sure. Yeah. There's nothing. Like what Teresa is saying, I think, is that you would say things behind Bob's back that you would not say to his face, or that you do not say to his face. When we are vulnerable, when we don't feel good about ourselves, when we're not confident in our craft, we have a tendency to over focus on other people, over contribute. So one, we need to be aware of that in ourselves, but two, we need to provide grace and space for the people who are still doing that. And even grace and space for people who are further along in their journeys, Mm -hmm. because no one has, no one has a perfect paragraph. No one has a perfect, you know, no one's stuff is perfect. Well, and for who, right? Because we might cringe. It's like, like the three of us do not have the same style necessarily. And so a book that might be my favorite book so, in fact, at least one of them, Molly's like, I hated that book. I wouldn't even open it up. Like she doesn't necessarily love the classics. And, oh, I'm, yeah, a big, and I'm a yeah. big fan of the classics and I really like literary fiction. And so, and sometimes I read like petty stuff. Petty is a wrong word, but like, I, I read other stuff that you're like, this is vapid. And I'm like, I know, <laughs> I know vapid, it is. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I so, yes. So I it. think, I think they're candy. Has, it's candy. Mm-hmm. And in your community, I think you need to be really thoughtful about like how your style fits in with what the other people read and what they like and what their style is. Because I think really great writers can get beat up by being in the, you have a a truly like poetic literary fic author in with, you know, maybe a different kind of genre. Candy writers, mm-hmm. and I'm not bash. I love candy. I, I I love my authors that I can listen to the book. I can laugh. I can laugh, and I can be like, "Wow, this is not the best plot ever," but I'm loving it. Yeah. Well, okay. Big example here is Twilight, right? Ugh. A lot of people bash on Twilight, but for what it is, it's wildly successful mm-hmm. because Absolutely. it's it's young adult candy. You know, it is, it is. And we were talking candy. about gray earlier. So let's throw out 50 shades. Yeah. It has an appeal. For- it, it does. And I, I admit, I didn't, I could not get through that book. Um, and it wasn't, it's not because of the sex. It, uh, to it, me, it was just not very good. See, and so other okay. people, it's, they just love it. So I think we got to hold the subjectivity of our craft in mm-hmm. and, and, Teresa in the last episode, hopefully you heard it, talked about the importance of, of seeing ourselves as artists and embracing that. And with that comes understanding subjectivity and learning to appreciate other people's creations, even when maybe they don't resonate with you. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're not for you. Everything doesn't have to be, but if they can resonate with someone else, like that's beautiful because our stories are what matter. And as authors, like we have our communities and there are people just because one person doesn't love your book doesn't mean another won't. I'm in a writing group Mm -hmm. right now where my book's not hitting with one person and it's definitely hitting with a couple others and that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Should we turn our final page? Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is where we talk about what's going on on your pages. And that's where we go to our community that we have worked very, very hard to develop. And it has some wonderful, amazing people on it. And one of the things that we do in our community on our Discord, so the Semi-Sages Discord, is we have our Resolution Warriors, where we tell people to celebrate their rejections. And it is the beginning of the new year. So we have a winner of the most rejections in 2022. And that is Hey J Shepherd. <laughs> Here I'm and to honor his amazing race to rejection, we are going to gift him with a $25 gift card. And yeah. not only that, uh KJ 
is I did I did reach out to him to congratulate him. Yay! And we are going to look at maybe having KJ on the show to talk about uh, rejection and his stories and putting yourself out there. So uh, look forward to that. Um, but I did yeah. want to, s- oh, go, oh ahead. go ahead. I was going to say, go? Molly, how many rejections did he have? And yeah. then how many successes did he have? 106 rejections mm-hmm. and at least two or three successes. 11. 11 successes. Woohoo! That's pretty high. That's a 10% so, like that. That's good. That's really good. Um, I wanted to, you know, also... Uh, shout out all the other people who participated in the race to rejection and put themselves out there. So in, in no particular order after KJ, uh, Reed, great Yay, job. Reed. Jasmine. Yay, Jasmine. You Woo-hoo. killed it. <laughs> Molly, Yay, you did Molly. good job. You did really, really good. Hard to Molly. Milan. Yay, Milan. You crushed it this year. Ooh, we got to change it to high five. Yubsy. <laughs> High five. You're okay. awesome and an inspiration. Woohoo. Teresa. I'm so impressed that you did you did rejections and ran a small press and I did didn't other know. stuff. I got close on one. I got really, really close. Oh, uh, that's the best. Yeah. Chris, great Yay! job. Yay. We love Chris. Love. Check out her episode. Oh. She's amazing. No. Uh, different Chris, oh, but also that Chris is great, but, but this is a different Chris. <laughs> that and- Chris, I will say, so we're talking about Chris Banner. Um, she, she is a listener and I'm, I bet she's listening now. Hi, well, at some point, um, but she, um, she talks very, very highly about our resolution warriors. Well, thank you. Uh, but this is Chris with a K great job. I'm proud of you. Good job. Good job. And our late comer to the race to rejection, Richard, who gave KJ a run for his money. Mm-hmm. That's impressive. Uh, and almost got to, he got to almost, he got to 88 rejections himself. That's so amazing. We Yay, had Richard. some impressive people on our discord and participating. And hopefully with 2023, the, the, the Excel is already up there. People mm-hmm. can already join in, put their name in. So we'd love to see you participate, even if you only get one rejection or if you're up at a hundred like KJ, it's a place to celebrate. It is a place to record those things down and feel inspired to keep going. And we hope to see you there this year. This year I'm putting my money where my mouth is. That's a weird phrase. It is a weird phrase. As soon as I said, I was like, that's not right. That is what people say, right? (laughs) It is. It is what people say. I guess I have to bet you money. I guess I have to buy the gift card if I don't submit next year. How about that? Oh, that's that's an interesting one. Then it's my money where my mouth is, right? That is. Now now your your money money is where your mouth is. I like it. I like it. Shaking on it. Shaking on it. Virtually 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 shaking. All righty, everybody. Thanks for Thanks listening. Thanks for being part of our community. And hope you find a community of your own. Please come join us on our Discord. It really is a beautiful community. And you're the best. Yes, you're you. the best. <laughs>